In this video, we will continue on with our examples looking at um, how to design for uh, both uh, flexure and shear uh, in steel members using NZS 3404. Um, so the example that we have here is a simply supported beam. It's uh, eight meters long, and it has this uh, uniformly distributed load on there uh, where the uh, permanent load or, or the, uh, the dead load, if you would, um, it's 5 kilonewtons per linear meter, and the imposed load Q, uh, you know, you could also refer to that as the um, live load, uh, that is 10 kilonewtons per meter. Um, a couple of other things which are uh, sort of uh, denoted here um, is that there's a composite floor which is used. So we won't, um, you know, take advantage of that from a strength or a deflection point. Uh, in this example, uh, but where this is important is it uh, provides uh, full lateral restraint. Um, over the entire length of the section. And that means that we, um, we won't have this beam subjected to lateral torsional buckling. Um, and then the other thing is we're going to use uh, grade 350 uh, steel. Um, so um, in New Zealand, uh, currently um, your hot rolled sections for uh, universal beams will come either in um, grade 300 steel, which is a 300 MPA yield stress uh, as a nominal yield stress, or grade 350. So um, that's what we will uh, will do here, uh, just for something a little bit different. Most of our other examples have been for uh, grade 300. And the uh, project just wants us to design the beam for uh, flexure and shear at um, ultimate limit state, or ULS. So the first thing we need to do um, in order to design this uh, beam is to determine the demands on it. So um, you know, determine demands. Um, and those demands will be uh, M star and uh, V star for our design moment and our design shear force, uh, respectively. Um, so uh, the first thing we need to do is we need to uh, get this in a load factor. So our, um, our load case uh, for gravity will be uh, 1.2. Uh, times our permanent load plus 1.5 uh, times our imposed load. And so if we work out what this um, uniformly distributed load W is, uh, we will get W equals 1.2 times 5 plus 1.5 times 10. Uh, you work all of that out and you get uh, W equal to 21 kilonewtons per meter. Well, now that we have our load, um, we can sort of solve for our reactions, get our uh, shear and bending moment profiles. So uh, we'll just draw a little um, free body diagram here. And that's going to be W equals uh, 21 kilonewtons per meter. And that's over 8 meters. Now, if you multiply 21 by 8 and we divide by 2, because this is a simply supported uh, beam, we get um, a reaction force of 84 kilonewtons on um, each side. Uh, then let's go ahead and draw our shear and uh, bending moment um, profiles. So shear, we'll just say, give our sign convention of uh, positive is up on the left, down on the right. Um, I'll just scoot that over just a tad. It's uh, just kind of creeping in here a little bit on. So we'll go V. Uh, 
Um, so our uh, shear distribution is going to be, because we have a uniformly distributed load, we will uh, linearly vary our shear um, from our reaction on down. And that's going to be 84 kilonewtons. And that's going to be 84 kilonewtons. And we cross over at uh, 4 meters. Um, if we look at our moment diagram, Uh, the um, simply supported beam, so we have a zero moment at both ends uh, for uniformly distributed load. It's going to be a parabolic uh, moment distribution. And uh, that's, a, that's a happy beam there, so positive moment, so a um, compression on the top flange. Um, and so we'll just put our V star equals 84. kilonewtons uh, and max equals a W L squared over 8 uh, that's going to equal uh, 21 kilonewton meters uh, times 8 meters squared uh, divided by 8 equals uh, 168 kilonewton meters so M star equals 168 kilonewton meters. So now that we have our demands, what we need to do is um, select a member um, based upon our, our moment demand um, and then uh, make sure that that's going to still be okay for, for this demand M star. Um, and then we just go through and we check to ensure that our uh, shear capacity of that member is, um, is larger than our shear force. So we don't, when we do, we look at um, sort of checking shear capacity, we, we very rarely uh, will um, design uh, and select a member just based purely on the shear. Uh, the only time that we would do that is if we... Um, if we knew that we had a very short span, and so you know we knew that our, our moment demand would be quite small um, relative to our shear demand. So uh, the next thing we need to do um, now that we have these loads is to go through and determine our section size. So we'll say uh, size. size the member for flexure. And so um, the governing equations we have uh, to deal with, uh, again, all of these are simply just our uh, demand has to be less than or equal to our capacity. Um, and M star has to be less than or equal to phi M sub B X. Um, so keeping in mind that this is um, our section capacity is this ms of x. And this is our member capacity. And if I put a little reference uh, column over here, um, this is all coming just straight out of NZS 3404 in section 5.1.1. So um, uh, essentially what we do is we, we size based upon our uh, section capacity, um, and then we adjust our um, section capacity based upon if lateral torsional buckling will occur you know, for... Lateral torsional buckling. 
and um, but one of the uh, one of the nice things is because we have a uh, composite floor, we've got full lateral restraint um, over the entire length of the member. Uh, means that um, uh, lateral torsional buckling is not going to happen. So we only need to look at this um, section capacity. So uh, we'll just write that down just to be uh, explicit. Um, you know, composite deck. Metal. Means full. Full lateral restraint for tire of member. And so that means that um, I'll just abbreviate lateral torsional buckling as LTB. Not occur. So we only need to find our section uh, capacity. We don't need to worry about finding MBs of X. Now this composite metal deck, just one subtlety here is, um, you know, this works because um, this is a simply supported beam, so the critical flange will be the top flange, which will be where the uh, composite metal deck uh, is attached to. And so uh, because of that, it means that the, uh, the critical flange, the, the one in compression, um, is going to be supported over the whole length. If we had a little cantilever out here and we had some negative moment, uh, we couldn't necessarily make that assumption. So... Um, all we need to find is this MS of X. Uh, then what we need to do is essentially um, work this problem backwards, this uh, M star, um, and find out what uh, sort of section size will be required. So if we have M star less than or equal to phi M's of X, well, M star is less than or equal to phi times Fy times S of X. So S of X um, is that we we really want to try to find a, um, a compact section. So uh, when when designing So uh, remember that compact section just means that we will be able to reach the um, entire plastic section uh, before local buckling will occur. So uh, let's just sort of work out what um, our, our, uh, our demands would be. Um, so if we have, say, uh, M star, that's going to be uh, 168 kilonewtons less than or equal to uh, 0 0.9 ms of x. We divide this out. ms of x um, has to be greater than or equal to 187 kilonewton meters. Um, and then as I said, we want to try for s of x and fy here uh, because we're going to use a grade 350 steel. Uh, let's just assume a... Um, uh, a nominal um, size. Um, if you remember that steels in New Zealand, the uh, thinner they are, the um, higher the uh, capacity will be. Um, so and this is basically all um, all steels which are uh, all, all steel plate which is less than 11 millimeters. Uh, you get a bump up 
in your um, nominal capacity for grade 300. That means it's 320 MPA for your yield. Uh, for grade 350, uh, it'll be 360. So we're just going to go ahead and assume that and then double check to make sure that um, that is the actual capacity from the section tables uh, for the beam that we are selecting. So um, if we work uh, out sort of what our uh, required section modulus is here, um, we will get Uh, 187 equals our required section modulus times Fy. Uh, that's going to be S required times 360 MPA. Um, we work this out uh, so that we would have now 187 times 1,000 squared. That 1,000 squared just gets us into newtons and millimeters um, divided by 360 MPA equals S required. Um, so S required equals um, 519,000 millimeters to the third. So what we need to do is um, go to our section property tables um, from the steel manufacturers and, and find a section which has at least um, uh, this size um, section modulus. So um, if we do that and just um, kick over here, um, you'll see. So here's our section modulus um, up here. And if we scroll down, we need to find something which is larger than uh, 519. So the first one we come to um, that is sort of that minimum size is the 633, and that is coming from a 310 UB uh, 40.4. So uh, first thing we want to do is check and make sure that it is a compact section, uh, because that was the assumption we made uh, when we were determining our uh, required section modulus. Um, we don't want a non-compact section because then we will get some local buckling before we get uh, the full plastic section. And then um, we also want to check and see what the yield strength is of the flanges. So a 310 uh, 40.4, if we just come to the uh, next page, um, and you'll see that for a 310 40.4, it is indeed... A, uh, a compact section, um, but only if we are using a, a grade 300. So if we look over here at the grade 350, um, and we look at the 310 40.4, we see that we do have a, uh, a 360 um, uh, a, sort of yield stress here, but it's a non-compact section. However, um, if you look at the effective section modulus about the X, it is still up above that um, uh, sort of 519 uh, that we need. So we're, we're well in excess, and so uh, we'll be um, okay there. Uh, to go to the, the next compact section um, would be a, a pretty huge step up in weight. Um, you know, we'd be adding a, another six kilograms per linear meter, um, and we, we'd have a, a, a lot more capacity um, out of it almost, uh, so significantly bigger section modulus here. Um, and you see, though, that the, uh, uh, the yield stress um, drops down there um, a little bit. So uh, we've got a couple of, of options. We can either stick with this non-compact section, and just say that ah, it's going to be all right. It's uh, so much bigger than what we 
what we need, or we can kick up to a compact one. So uh, for this pro for for this example, we will just continue on um, with our uh, our non-compact uh, section here for this grade 350. So our effective section modulus is going to be 629. So uh, coming back, we'll go try a 310 UB 40.4. Our effective section modulus uh, again was um, uh, 629 times 10 to the third. Um, so that is 629 times 10 to the third millimeters to the third and um, FY of the flange was indeed 360 MPA so we'll just go back here uh, just to double check that again you can see uh, FY the flange is um, 360 uh, for that 310 uh, UB 40.4. So uh, now what we need to do is just sort of determine what our um, our section mod uh, what our um, bending capacity is here and see if it's uh, larger than our uh, demand. So um, we have M star has to be less than or equal to phi times 360 times 629 times 10 to the third and then we're going to divide all of that by 1000 squared to get it into um, kilonewtons and um, meters um, phi uh, equals 0 0.9 so we have 0.9 times 360 times uh, 629 times 10 to the third and dividing by a thousand squared we have M star uh, which is equal to um, 168 kilonewton meters uh, is indeed less than or equal to um, phi M sub x equal to uh, 203.8 kilonewton meters. So even though we do have um, a non-compact section here, uh, the demand uh, that we're seeing on this beam is so so small that um, uh, relative to the size that, that it's going to be okay. Um, so we have you know okay for flexure. Um, the the next um, step that we need to do now is so we, we've designed this beam we've picked it out for flexure we need to see if it's going to be okay for shear so we'll go um, checking our shear capacity um, our governing equation on that is V star has to be less than or equal to phi V sub V. Uh, again, that's just coming straight out of the steel standard NZS 3404 uh, in section 5.11.1. Uh, now, uh, the key thing that we need to determine is um, what type of um, shear stress distribution uh, will we have um, in our member and so it's going to be dependent upon whether we have a uniform um, shear stress distribution or a non-uniform shear stress distribution so if we um, if we go back uh, sort of to our um, our standard here so this is in this 3101 uh, we can see that if we have a web um, which uh, of an I section uh, which is uh, symmetric 
um, and it is uh, loaded parallel to the web, uh, we're going to have a uniform shear stress distribution. So this is the um, uh, basically the state that we are uh, going to design for. Um, so now that we know our shear stress distribution, we need to determine uh, if the web is stocky or not. And so a stocky web will be able to take advantage of the um, entire uh, you know, sort of area of that web um, undergoing full plastic deformation. Uh, so we get sort of essentially just um, the shear stress uh, at yield uh, of that web times the area of it as our capacity. Um, if it's a slender web, uh, as opposed to stocky, um, then we will get some buckling of that web prior to the um, uh, full plasticity being developed. So, um, we have a uh, uniform So uniform shear stress distribution, um, check slenderness. Um, and all of this is just going to come, again, I'll, I'll put a, a little note of where um, the uh, code equations we're using are coming out of. One, a. So um, now all we need to do is do a slenderness check, and, and then um, it's a fairly straightforward calculation to get our um, our capacity there. So uh, Um, so for a 310 UB 40.4 um, equals D1 equals, uh, so what we, what we need to do is on the slenderness check is we need to see um, the ratio, basically the slenderness of our web, so the ratio of the clear height uh, so for a uh, for an I section, this D sub P becomes uh, D1 uh, to the thickness of the web, and see where does it sit relative to the slenderness ratio of 82 over the yield strength of the web uh, divided by 250. Um, so if we go over to our uh, section uh, property tables um, and we um, we go back up to sort of the, the geometry um, portion, and we go to our 310 UB. Uh, we'll just uh, get this to scroll up for us. Um, our 310 UB 40.4, uh, you can see D1 is going to be um, 284 uh, millimeters deep, uh, and the thickness of the web is 6.1 um, millimeters. And the yield stress of the web is also going to be 360 uh, MPA. So um, just sort of plugging those in, uh, we get um, 284. And um, T sub W equals uh, 6.1. And these are in millimeters. So... D sub P over T sub W equals 46.5. Um, and then the stocky web criteria, uh, like we looked up, uh, D sub P over T sub W has to be less than or equal to 82 over um, the yield stress over 250, all of that to the square root. So we get 46.5 
determine if it's greater than or equal to 82 over 360 over 250. Um, and if we, uh, if we work that out, we see that um, 46.5 uh, is indeed less than or equal to all of this works out to 68.3 as our slenderness ratio. And so uh, we have a stocky web. Um, so we have a stocky web and a uh, uniform shear stress distribution. Um, if we go back to our design standard, uh, what we'll see is that for a stocky web with uniform shear stress distribution, our V sub VU is going to be V sub W. And so let's look up what V sub W equals. Um, and if we just scroll down here for a flat plate, uh, type member V sub W is just going to be 0 0.6 uh, times the yield stress of the web uh, times the gross area of the web. Now the 0 0.6 FY is just coming straight out of Von Mies uh, failure criterion. Um, and so yeah, this is uh, essentially we just get to use some elementary um, mechanics and materials uh, in order to do this um, uh, design check. So um, that's where we're at. So we're, we're kind of in the home stretch here. Um, so we'll go V sub V equals V sub W equals 0 0.6 times FY AW. And that's just from 5.11.4.1 as our uh, reference here. And so um, that's going to be equal to 0 0.6 uh, times 360 uh, megapascal because that is the yield stress of the web uh, which we can just pull out of the tables. Uh, the area of the web is just going to be uh, 284 times uh, 6.1 so 284 times 6.1 and we'll divide that by a thousand sort of newtons per kilonewtons just to get us in uh, kilonewtons because um, that is the uh, the units of that we've worked out our demand so v sub w equals uh, 374 kilonewtons. So um, if V star has to be less than or equal to phi V sub V, um, then we have, if we go uh, back to what our uh, demand was, you can see that our maximum shear is 84 kilonewtons. So uh, we got 84 has to be less than or equal to 0.9 times 374 um, and we find that um, indeed 84 kilonewtons is less than um, 337 kilonewtons. So it's okay for shear, and um, so we can just state use a 310 UB 40.4. Now, something that just sort of as a, a final note on this, so is that if you look, um, kind of what we, we stated before is that relative to our moment capacity, we have much, much, much greater shear capacity um, than, um, than we do sort of that ratio between the, um, the moment and um, the, the moment capacity and the moment demand. Uh, and this is really because we have a, a relatively uh, large span, uh, so relatively high moment demand. 
uh, relative to that span, uh, and so uh, actually quite a small um, sort of shear demand on that. So um, I hope you found that helpful. Uh, again, uh, sort of on the design process, uh, we, we designed for um, our bending uh, demands first, uh, work out sort of what our uh, bending uh, capacity needs to be, and then we go through and we check shear. And when we check shear, we're looking at two things. One, uh, what the shear stress distribution is, whether it's uniform or non-uniform, and then the uh, slenderness of the web, um, whether it is a stocky or a slender web. And then we just use the, uh, the appropriate equations from there. So with that, we'll wrap up. Um, thanks for watching.